Hey everyone on Facebook, welcome to our show, The Tour Guide welcomes you. I'm your host, that girl, The Tour Guide. So today is Friday, it is April 14th, 2023. At any point in time you're consuming this content, I can only hope you're doing well and I apologize in advance if I waste your, fine, your time. So we're going to be talking about three different major talking points. We're going to do our well-balanced weekend discussion, finding contentment, business and tech talks, talking about morale and the work environment, and then Social Causes Fridays. We're going to be talking about the collapse of society, preparing for it, and studying trends and how history kind of repeats itself, and where we're at in our current climate today within society. So let's just talk about our well-balanced weekends, focusing on what you can do this weekend to help you prepare for the next week. Um, Hopefully you have an opportunity to kind of just slow down and stop, take a rest or a break. If not, um, I hope sometime in the near future you'll have an opportunity to take some of these thoughts into consideration. So I wanted to bring up first contentment in life. Oftentimes we hear about the pursuit of happiness or I just want to be happy. Or you hear about people in marriages who talk about wanting to feel happy. I just want to be happy in my life, which is a noble and, you know, admirable pursuit. But it's also very fleeting and short-lived. So we have to realize happiness is more than just a feeling. It's um, a state of mind. And the objective really needs to be finding the contentment in all circumstances. Um, it's biblical, but it's also just realistic. The feeling of happiness, as many of us know, and I'm just going to kind of reiterate, is um, often due to chemical responses and exchanges. We talk about dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. All of those different things there's other ones out there um, but how do we achieve the feeling of contentment and hardships and one of the first things we have to acknowledge is the goal is not necessarily happiness it's always good it's a goal to obtain to find um, a point in your life where you can be around things or create an environment or be in a state of mind where you are perpetually more at peace um, not necessarily feeling the feeling of happiness, but just feeling the feeling of I'm okay with whatever pops up, whatever random circumstance comes up into my life. I will find a state of peace, which will make it more easily attainable or achievable to find the feeling of happiness. So um, in the past, I've brought up a lot of discussions about health and nutrition. I've talked about mental health and mental well-being. So all of this comes into play. But one of the biggest things that um, that I've, um, that's beneficial to achieving this feeling of happiness or contentment is finding the moments in life where it's, or I shouldn't say the moments in life, finding things in your life to be thankful for, to at any point again to find contentment. So a lot of people talk about gratitude journals and finding things to be thankful for. Um, in addition to that, one of the ways that you can achieve these feelings that you're trying to aspire towards is serving and serving your community, um, whatever you're doing, working with your whole heart, with your intent not to obtain any financial gain or to um, attain any type of success or status, but genuinely a feeling of, I want to serve other people. I want to improve the lives of others. I want to give back to the community that is given me, um, or given to me. Just take it to a smaller level. Take, just break it down. Things that you don't even think about. Um, back in the day, they had the Me Too movement, and there was a lot of push against um, toxic masculinity. And there is a lot of validity in those movements. One of the things, though, we forgot in that movement is all of the positive that has been brought about in society and civilizations through the hard work of the average man. We often take for granted the sidewalks that we walk on. This is coming from um, United States Western culture, um, so maybe not in every place in the world who's ever consuming this content, but again, coming from an audience or coming from a person speaking to an audience that's in um, more of an industrialized community that in perspective but we often take for granted our sidewalks our paved roads our vehicles um, 
the roofing in our homes, people who built our houses, people who build our schools, to the, the plumbing system, the people who work in um, the refuse, who take our recycling and our garbage out, the waste, um, anyone that works within um, water, water filtration, the people who um, pretty much keep society running. You honestly don't really take into account how important plumbing and the pipe system is until there's a problem, until there's a leak. Um, we, we often don't really realize or appreciate um, our clean communities, you know, are the people that take away the trash if suddenly that service isn't there. You notice when the church, when the, sorry, not church, you notice when the trash is piling up, um, but when there's no trash, do you ever stop and think, you know, thank you for the people who remove this waste and they take it away. Do you ever think about the people who prune the trees or clean up your parks? Do you ever think about the people who um, who clean the cleaning service? You know, these are all things to be very, very grateful and thankful for. The people that pave the roads, the people that build the schools, the people that build your house, the people that install the solar panels and they they work on your roof, the handyman. You know, little things like that. People that. Um, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but this is just one of my prayers when I say grace, when I bless my food, and I thank God for the food. I don't just thank God, which is the, the primary person who's provided the food, but I also ask him to bless the truck drivers, the delivery drivers who bring the food to the grocery stores. I, I thank the farmers who picked the produce. I thank the people who stocked the, um, the food on the shelves for me. I thank the people that work in the stores. Um, I'm grateful for any person who, as I say, that's contributed to this meal that I'm enjoying. I ask God will bless and keep their family and keep them protected from all hurt, harm, and danger. I'm so grateful for the people who, again, the truck drivers who, who, who bring the food, the people who work in the farms, the people who stock the shelves. Um, I try to find gratitude and just the small things. Like, thank you, God, for allowing me to be able to walk down the street on a sidewalk that is paved, that I have a house that was built that you know that there is a lot of city planning that goes into creating the neighborhoods neighborhoods and communities that i live in i'm very grateful for all the little small details and it puts a lot of things into perspective and um the people who you know who work across the world who are who are busting their butts trying to provide for themselves or provide for others i'm grateful for their efforts and Having that mindset, I'm, I, I really don't have that much to complain about, and then it gives me a peace of mind, and I find contentment in these things. And recently, I had an opportunity to serve um, in my community, and I'm looking forward to going back. Um, it was um, something that I needed to do. If you are a working person, um, you're greatly appreciated and greatly valued. If you aren't in a position to work right now, try to find an opportunity to volunteer, to serve your time, whether it's an animal shelter, um, a soup kitchen, um, hanging out with um, elderly people, going to nursing homes, seeing if there's any type of program you can do, um, boys and girls clubs. Um, find a way to give back to your community. I know that a lot of, I've, he I've heard a lot about people fostering animals, taking care of pets, um, or the animals that are waiting to be adopted to become pets. So um, try to find something that you can do. Work with what you can, with what you have, and all of this effort, again, with the mindset of, I'm not trying to feel like happy, I'm just trying to do something to give back. And through that process, you the feelings of happiness manifest naturally. They just come about you, and it's, it's long-lasting. It's fulfilling. It'll carry you through um, hardships and circumstances that are just, they may seem unbearable, um, but it's again, need to be taken with um, the proper mindset of what is it that I'm really trying to pursue? We hear them again, the pursuit of happiness, and they're not guaranteeing you're going to be happy, but you have the right to pursue it. And that is oftentimes forgotten, that detail is forgotten. We're so used to the, I call it the microwave instant gratification syndrome, they're the calculators where you get your instant results, your instant answers, the um, fast internet speed connections all of that stuff um we forget that things take time things need to sit and sometimes we need to just sit and just focus on what it is that i really want out of life how do i achieve these things and how can i find
contentment and just in everything and just again finding the appreciation and the value so if you have an opportunity this weekend um, find some ways where you can just truly be grateful and find something to be grateful for and thank someone um, if in your own thoughts and your own prayers and your own meditations or tell the person directly how much you're grateful for them if you see beautiful art and you have an opportunity to talk to the artist tell the artist how much your their art moves you or the music that you listen to try to find a way to express your appreciation for their talent and their beauty if there's a food that you love find a way to express your appreciation to the chef um, thank your grocery store workers, uh, the people who stock your shelves where you go shopping, truck drivers, refuse workers, recycling, um, again, handyman, handy women, first responders especially, you know, all of these things we kind of take for granted, especially in the West, in Western culture. Um, we have a lot of benefits and advantages and privileges and blessings. And we just need to stop and slow down and just take time to appreciate that. So that's all I wanted to say for our first segment for our Well Balance Weekend. So find time to appreciate that and take it with you into the next week. So for our business and tech talk, so continuing on kind of with the same sentiment, the morale in the workplace. I kind of posted a couple of videos earlier that um, I had done last year talking about where is your moral compass and where is it does it stem from where was your foundation when it comes time for doing a good job what's the motivation is it simply because i'm trying to make a lot of money i need to survive you know all noble reasons and causes for you know working and doing a good job but ultimately though if you didn't have the fear of not having money or if you weren't trying to rank up and get a certain level of social status or a certain title what really compels you to do a good job? Is it something that's important to you? Is it something that you're constantly striving for or working towards? Um, what is it that compels you to have integrity, to do a good job, even if no one's watching? Um, so I often voice this question just wondering, um, if you don't have a Christian faith or a godly faith or any type of faith in a deity, if you're not religious, if you don't have any type of God that a religious figure that you look up to if you're not um, a Buddhist or if you're not Islamic or you're not Jewish or whatever other religion is out there what is it inside of you that compels you to do good you know um, so questions to, to carry with you when you go to the workplace or to your work setting um, so one of the things that I like to bring up, though, is an experience I had working with a company, privately owned, um, an African-American woman. She was a former um, crime scene investigator. And she opened up her own business working with developmentally disabled adults, or I like to call them alternately abled, um, or a different subject or different story. But the thing is, her mindset was like she ran a very, very tight ship a lot of respect the interview process was not a verbal interview it was written you had to write your interview answers out and the importance of that was to establish that the the documentation was crucial and everyday interactions with the clients and the residents was um, documented and it was very very vital that you, you were able to keep track of their progress and their milestones and what they accomplished or didn't accomplish whatever whatever their struggles were you were to document them and that was important and also um i had an incident with a former co-worker from a different company and she came to the establishment because the jobs kind of crossed over and she made the attempt to talk to one of my supervisors about me saying some really negative things and my supervisor was like stop we don't do that here. We're not going to talk. I don't want to hear. So she took off in a huff, really upset. The owner of the company tried to say hi to her, and she just blew her off. She was really disrespectful and cut her off and took off. So the owner of the company calls the other company that the woman worked for and said, this woman cannot come to my business. She cannot come on the premises until she apologized because she completely disrespected me unnecessarily. So she had to apologize to my new boss and then also my supervisor reiterated that we don't tolerate gossip she was flat out said I don't care she told me privately in a different conversation she's like I don't care what the circumstances were and the other company that you work for I don't we don't want to hear about it we don't gossip 
and I'm very grateful for them creating such a very safe environment where I knew that the information that I exchanged with them in private was going to remain confidential. They weren't going to tolerate anyone talking bad or disrespecting other people. Um, it was like very, very professional and I appreciated that. And I'm like, and I always say thanks be to God. It is because of the grace of God. I was able to maintain um, a perfect work attendance. And I also have to add a disclaimer that I feel it's very, very important. Um, I, in the video I posted here, I shared it, it was from TikTok. I said that it was my first pregnancy and I maintained perfect work attendance. Okay, that is not entirely accurate. And this, there's a reason why I'm going to bring this detail up. You may see it, say it's irrelevant, but it's actually very, very relevant. So bear with me. Okay, so that was the first pregnancy that I had with my, at the time, husband then. My first pregnancy. And I maintained perfect work attendance. I wasn't nauseous. I wasn't, I mean, I was uncomfortable because I was pregnant, but I still was able to work every single day and not miss a day of work. Thanks be to God. That's a blessing. The thing is, though, and it's very interesting that I just happened to have this here. This is a dress that says, um, every life has a place in my heart. And a lot of you guys know I am host of War of, so these are like a remembrance of the other babies I had. And then my other children right here, just kind of a memory of all my children. Okay. So I had two prior pregnancies that ended in abortion, unfortunately, um, that's I've repented of and I've gone through counseling and therapy still recovering from but the reason why I bring that up is the first pregnancy I was extremely sick very nauseous didn't do well so very sick the second one I don't really remember too much of the details but the first one was difficult and a lot of people think that everything was a cakewalk and it was easy there's lots of problems that come with that each one is different and each side effect and how, um, how your body changes and how it changes you mentally and emotionally. It affects you. And um, I'm just grateful that God carried me through that process. In addition to um, the experience that I had in the work setting, I'm very, very grateful, again, that I had such great employers who took their jobs very, very seriously. They respected the employees. They, they respected the residents and the clients that they had. And um, the morale was high there. And... I'm again just asking people out there for our business and tech talks discussions and you're in a work and setting in the environment what compels you to do a good job what motivates you to do good work to work hard um, to have integrity where does your moral compass tend from so these are some of the questions that I wanted to pose for you for our business and tech talks discussion so for our third segment so we're going to talk about the collapse of civilization or what could be um, I don't know is, there, is it possible to avoid it? Are we at the brink of the collapse of society? And this one's going to be a little bit heavy, and I don't want to cause any disrespect to anyone because I have friends and family who range from different ethnic backgrounds, age groups, um, and then also orientation, sexual orientation, and religious beliefs. So, kind of expansive topic, but um, I posted one of my uh, sorry one of my blogs from 2021 talking about rules, respect, and regulations, and um, comparing the human body, the skeletal system, to the foundation that upholds society, and that there are people in society who are extremely rigid and hard, and um, people who are difficult and inflexible. We need people like that in, civ in civilization who are inflexible, who are not going to bend or break, because if you do that will cause a collapse of society. We need people who are going to enforce rules, who are going to enforce morals, and there's a reason for it. I know that it's very important that we show love and tolerance and that we express um, community and the importance of diversity and trying to show love and extend to all of that to people. It's very, very important and vital that we have a lot of compassion, mercy, and empathy for people from for varying reasons and um, everyone has gone through time, different circumstances, different types of traumas, different types of hardships. And it's, again, very, very vital that we take this, a lot of this into account when we're trying to conduct society. And um, especially with a company that I used to work for, we had individuals with special needs, disabilities. And at one point in time, um, 
one of the issues of abortion, and I'll bring it up again, and why I'm so opposed to it, is like they were, you know, pretty much um, diagnosing people with Down syndrome. One of my pregnancies, they were testing, I didn't want them to test for it, for any abnormal, abnormalities or any type of Down syndrome or anything. But um, in one of the tests, they came up and they realized that there was some type of something that they noticed and I had to do extra ultrasound and they said that it's kind of indicative if this is this is one factor that is always in children with Down syndrome and we just want to take you know a closer look I wasn't worried about it at all but um, people do opt for elective abortions if their children you know if they feel that their child is going to have special needs and it's kind of unfortunate. So I was working with people that had special needs, disabilities, and alternately disabled or abled. And it broke my heart just knowing that there were people like who weren't willing to try and either have open adoption. Just for so many different reasons. But the point that I'm trying to make is um, if we're not careful to enforce rules and strict regulations about certain things surrounding this, you know, people... Um, that is where the collapse of society comes in. And I know people don't like hearing this and they want to dispute me. I don't care. I've done a lot of research on this subject. I've shared that I've had abortions. I've done a lot of research on this, this subject. We are not overpopulated. The abortion industry is actually creating a decline in human population. We're entering a demographic winter. But that's not even what my topic was about today. That just kind of popped into my mind. But please study the depopulization of society, the depopulation agenda, um, birth control, and abortion. And now we're going to talk about the transgender movement and infertility. And again, the decline of human population. I'm talking about the collapse of society. I posted a couple of videos earlier by this woman. And I'm pro I apologize for not having her name at the top of my head. I believe something page. And um, she is an atheist, she's um, an instructor, um, an educator, a philosopher, um, different titles she has. And she was talking about the collapse of society, feminism, the snowflake type of mentality, um, and just predicting, again, the collapse of society. All these major civilizations in the past, they have, if you're studying the patterns of human nature and humankind, it, um, when we are so open and accepting to, um, first is the homosexual, or the, it's the heterosexuals, and then, then the homosexuals, and then we get a little bit more soft and fluid, um, and you've got other religious groups on the outskirts of society circling around like wolves, waiting for the initial society to slowly collapse on itself. Um, I understand Again, with the homosexual community, the um, LGBT, all of that, um, there's a reason for it. We love people. We're not going to dispute that. The thing is that we do need to be aware, though, of the repercussions of being so openly tolerant and not correcting behavior or not keeping certain things in check. Because if you accept that, you have to accept anything else, like everything else. Whatever is not conventional to coot for with the male and female DNA to create a new human being, anything that's outside of that is going to create um, less civilization, less people to continue the next generation. Currently, we do have a lot of people. Certain areas, hear me out, certain areas are densely populated. Certain areas, big cities, major cities are overpopulated, but not the entire world. The entire world is actually underpopulated and it's being intentionally depopulated. With the push of the transgender movement, you're creating more um, infertility. There are people who are not having children by choice, and that's your choice. Respect that. I'm not, com I'm not complaining. Okay, I'm not sitting here passing judgment. I'm just bringing up facts. I'm bringing up patterns and I'm trying to show people, especially the upcoming generation, um, there are consequences for the choices that you make. Whether it's right or wrong for you is not my point. I'm just pre presenting you the facts. So you have infertility um, because of people who are pushing this transgender movement. They're not going to be able to have children or conceive the same sex relations 
just naturally two men and two women are not going to be able to conceive. Um, the feminist movement versus the toxic masculinity, the, the, the battle of the sexes, the abortion industry, the birth control industry, it's all creating a decline in human population and it's causing um, anxiety, depression, isolation, more problems and ultimately when you have more single parent households that also breaks down the family structure because that individual child is more predisposed to criminal activity, they're more predisposed to depression and repeating the cycle which is again not procreating, not cre creating safe family environments to uphold the next generation of people. So more broken dismantled homes, more broken dismantled individuals creating ultimately dismantled societies. And when you have, again, this woman, um, I shared her videos earlier, she's an atheist, but she says that you need to teach people the brutal history, the past, to see what happened and to prevent these things from happening. You need to realize that these other religions out here, um, especially, you know, Islam and um, certain Christian sects, they are very, very big on family and pushing the family um, unit. And it's very important to build up families. But if you've got people who are aggressive and who don't respect your values or your value systems or they're on the extreme ends, the extreme fringes of society, um, that's, when civil that's when a civilization collapses on itself. And it's important now to recognize, again, we want to have love for our fellow man. We want to have peace on earth. We want to be accepting and tolerant, especially people with disabilities, especially people in the LGBTQ community, etc. We want them to live happy lives, but we also need to enforce the rules and respect things. Respect, um, you cannot argue with science. I'm sorry, you just can't. As much as two women, just two biological women, you're never going to create a child without medical intervention introducing male DNA. Same with two males, you cannot, no matter what you do, cannot introduce another female without, or another child without the female parts. So anything that goes outside of conventional relationships, you're gonna to have to accept people who identify as different species. And I won't use the word, but essentially, um, sexual relationships outside of the human species you're going to have to accept it because if you accept anything else that's unconventional you're going to have to accept everything else people who identify of different ages they call it maps um, minor attracted people that is on the rise that's being more accepted and that's the thing where again collapse the society when you have people who are completely encompassed with sexual desires um seeking the happiness. So in the very, very introduction of our, the tour guide welcome to discussion, we talked about happiness and people want to feel happy and they want to get those happy emotions and feelings. The thing is though, we cannot continually have those happy feelings and emotions. These are chemical exchanges, chemical responses, and it's not sustainable for a person to have those chemical relax, um, responses or releases on a, on a continuous basis. There are times where you're not going to feel happy. You're not going to be happy. You have to find moments of nothing. You have to be content with not feeling or deal with painful emotions. So the woman that I referenced earlier in one of her talks says we really need to talk about the painful things in the history. We need to sit there and deal with uncomfortable things, uncomfortable emotions, and work through our problems. So again, the collapse of society, how do we prevent it? We need to be healthy. We need to be well-balanced. We need to be focused. We need to be mindful. We need to get in tune with um, a higher power, spiritualism, if you will. You need to figure out where your moral compass stems from, what's important to you, why it matters, and um, who are you answering to? Who are you accountable to? If you're not, you know, in a family unit and you're just focused on yourself, you know, not, not, not being appreciative of what society offers you, not being grateful for the blessings that you have living in this country without, you know, we've got medical intervention, we've got the medical, the, the first responders, we've got scientists and doctors, you've got the paved schools or the paved sidewalks, school buildings, air conditioning, heater units, appliances, apps, smartphones, all of this stuff. Like, if you don't appreciate the value of these things and the person's 
that created these things and built these things and built societies for you to support. What really are you doing? What is your focus here? If you cannot get in tune with that, we are seriously in trouble because you cannot sustain all these happy emotions. That's where people get into the addiction of drugs. They get into the addiction of, I want that dopamine hit. I need that fix. I need that. Whether it's pornography addiction, whether it's sex addiction, whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, TV, gambling, whatever, coffee enemas, um, hoarding, what have you. You cannot sustain these emotions and feelings perpetually all the time. It'll leave you to depression and you'll slowly deteriorate. So again, so for our Social Causes Friday's discussions, please let's talk about the, um, the collapse of society, how to prevent that, how to correct this behavior or these actions or this phenomenon that's coming, the demographic, demographic winter where we're in a major, huge depopulation of the human race human species as it slowly collapses. Do some research, study, look into it. I'll put some more links up here for you guys to check out. But with that, I've been your host, That Girl, the tour guide. Again, it is April 14th, 2023. At any point in time you're consuming this content, I can only hope you're doing well. As always, thank you for tuning in and God's peace.